Hi everyone and happy Monday. Welcome to another Johanna Basford planner page. Um, as you are aware it is the 7th of November. We have this very interesting um, lily pad type um, picture. I think this is from Secret Garden, maybe Enchanted Forest. Not sure. Anyway, and I thought I would try out my um, super soft um, design journey pencils by Stedler. These are the ones that they sent me to try. I thought um, we'd try them on this paper. Now I have used them on um, a few um, books. I've used them in a Hannah Carlson book. They went down very well, but I've not found a pencil that doesn't do well there. And I've also used them in um, Rooms of Wonder and they went down well there. You will see when I first tried them out, that was the book that I used. So uh, let's have a go in here. Now I'm not going to colour the whole of this page, I shouldn't imagine. There's a lot going on. But let's have a go at um, some of these lily pads. Now we have two different types. We have these type, and then we have these ones with these sort of leaf shapes in. Um, let's just start with one of these and see how it goes. Now normally, there's sort of two ways that I tend to do lily pads, either with a sort of greeny blue colour or with some sort of olives and oranges. So we'll do a couple of types, shall we? So we've got the number 56, which is our light olive, and we'll start. Let's do this one. And uh, I'm just going to do a layer all over just to get us going, really. You can see how it comes out on the page. It's quite pale, actually, isn't it? But it is the light olive. It's quite a yellowy colour. So that's how it looks. I'm going to add a bit of orange or maybe, maybe we'll add a brown rather than orange. Let's do this one. This is the, um, just looking up on my list, it is the Burnt Sienna and uh, we'll try this. Maybe we'll put it on the edge. Like that. You can see it's going to go well with this light olive. Maybe a little bit in the middle, just a tad. Let's try that. Then let's go back to our light olive, number 56. Go right over the top and we'll press a bit harder, or we'll just layer up a bit more. So we get a bit more colour. It's still quite pale, isn't it? It's still too pale for me. As nice as it is, it's a bit pale. What I'm going to do is grab a slightly darker green to go over it. I missed that bit, hang about. There we go. Um, let's try this one. This is the um, number 50, which is the willow green. So it's the next sort of darkest green, so it isn't massively dark. And we can just take that up a notch. Now I'm very aware that this doesn't really look like a lily pad but I don't think that matters. So let's just darken that up a little bit. So we've got a light olive, a burnt sienna, another layer of light olive, then this um, willow green, and then I'm gonna go back over the burnt sienna areas again to darken them up get a bit pale and we can get a fairly good amount of colour out of these if we uh, work them obviously where I'm going on top of the light olive not quite as dark but I'm going to make that centre there we go it's quite autumnal isn't it which I like so there is one oops I've gone over there it doesn't matter I'm going to do those the same so all these will be done in this way. Now these other ones, oops, I think we could do in some different colours, um, different greens. We have the number 38, which is the sea green. So it's very bluey. Oops, sorry, you might not be able to see that. And we'll start off this one in this and we'll do the edge. And you'll see how very, very different it is. Look at that. It, as I say, it's very bluey. But that's okay with me. This is going to be a bit of a mishmash, I guess, with this bluey green next to these olives. But um, I just want to try these pencils out a bit more, really. 
and so we're a bit limited. I say a bit, we've got four greens, it's not that limiting and of course we can mix them up. So if we do that edge like that and then hmm, maybe we'll just do this pattern bit here in a light layer, perhaps a bit darker at the bottom like that, it's a bit darker here and then quite light as we go up here and then I'm going to go over all of it in another colour green we'll see what happens they go down quite nicely they're definitely now I know when they're called super soft some people might expect them to be like um, this is number five I'm going to go over all of it um, sort of like um, Prismas and they're not they are more soft in the sense of chalky soft rather than smudgy smudgy soft <laughs> so they're not um you know you can't they're not really sort of lipstick like <laughs> like um some people describe prismas they are definitely hard but yeah they sort of feel more as I say chalky so by putting that over the top we um, we tone down that bluishness a little bit but hopefully we can still got a bit of a block there still see the uh, difference in the colors coming through like this bit is just this color whereas that's a mix you can just neaten them up a bit I like that you know a few layers and it's done so there's that, that's how I'm going to do those. We've got the stems, I've gone over the edge, it doesn't matter. Um, I think I'll probably do the stems in the um, 38 colour, like that. Just because it's the darkest really. Like that, there we go. Now we've got all these flowers dotted about and I'm thinking, oh, lilies. Uh, mortar lilies I usually see them either in yellow or in pink now we've got to match two colors we've got lots of different lilies um, drawn here and I'm thinking I would rather do them all one color or one mix of colors so that I'd have to keep thinking about what color do I do them all the time and the um there is a pink let me see if we got it in this set this, um, I think it's this one. What pink is that? The number 20, the magenta, no. This one, the number 25. This is just called pink. And I think this is quite a salmon y pink colour, I think. And I think it might work better. Let's give it a go. I'm going to do the petals darker towards the uh, centre of the flower and light towards the tip I think this pink probably works quite well with all the greens whereas a sort of magenta or the um, Bordeaux as they call it they're a bit um, too purpley they'd be a bit too bluey to go with this color so I think this still works even with these browns it's my theory anyway so this is how I'm going to do all the um, flowers like this the centers I think we're doing yellow now I don't always like doing flower centers yellow I have a lot of series of videos quite an old series now actually on how to do flower centers in different ways this is number one but when you've got a page like this when there's lots going on keeping it simple is sometimes the way to go it's quite a nice yellow look so all my flowers are going to be done like that so in the ones that have got layers like this one I should just make it darker in that bit and then lighter 
I don't know about the edge. I might make that a little bit darker, but I still stick with the same colours. And the dots I'm just going to do over in the yellow, just to keep it simple. And so this one, it hasn't really got a centre. I still do that bit yellow. Okay. Now, let's have a look at what else we've got. We do have a fish. There he is. I want to do him in orange because I always do my fish in orange. But I think I mustn't. Let's, let's pick a different colour. Let's do a bluey purpley fish just for the sake of doing something a bit different so this is number six which is the um trying to find the name violet okay it's the only sort of purpley tone i have in this set and what i'm going to do is try and make it quite dark here on the fin look and then lighter towards the edge of it that we'll do the same on this one and here I don't know if this is supposed to be its gills or a fin but I'm just gonna go with it do it like this just darken that bit up a bit if it's not darkening very well a sharper pencil can help just just persevering really oh and the tail now I'm thinking maybe a blue for the main part I'm just try and get some color down there and then I'm gonna make it a little bit darker nearer to the fish's body a bit tricky down here right in the corner on the edge of the page now these bits the scales I'm gonna do in this color I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil I'm going to ignore this bit and I'm going to go straight in with this one and try to make it lighter on the edge of each one so it looks like it's reflecting the light because scales are often shiny. I do have quite a few different videos with fish. If you um, go to my main um, YouTube page if you just click my name when you finish watching this video go to my main page there's a search um, magnifying glass on that page if you type in fish you will see all my fish videos so uh, there are a few there's also some water and water lilies um, might be from this page I'm not sure um, so there are different ones you can have a look at I've made a lot of videos over the years so, uh, and most of my fish ones are from Johanna Bassford, not all of them. I'm also going to use this dark blue. This is number 33. It's actually cobalt blue, it's called. But I'm not convinced, for me, this is a cobalt blue. But anyway, um, I think it's quite a good tone to work with the purple. So the darkest blue that um, is in the set... And what I'm going to try and do is make it a bit darker at the bottom of the fish. Sort of fade it up a little bit. So that it looks a little bit more interesting. Like this. So let me see. I'm trying to make it smooth, but it's a bit darker down here. I'm just going to layer it up a bit more until I'm happy it can often be a job to decide when to stop fiddling um, the eye, I'll show you how I always do eyes Oops. this is number 80 which is our grey it's called light grey and what I do is I do a little bit here and fade that and then a little bit here leaving some white so the eye looks slightly shiny it might be quite tricky to see. I have zoomed out quite a way now I've talked you through quite a bit but we've got a lot of leaves here which are um, not lily pads and I think what I will do I've got all my four greens that I've been using across these um, here I think what I would do is just randomly use different greens but probably one for each um, 
I won't go dark, lighter, 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 so that's a little bit obvious, but I will mix it up a little bit and just use, I've got like this five here, so I have to do, use one twice and we've got some sort of grassy bits there. But I just use one shade and just fade them. I'll show you, hold on. So like this one, say this is number 56, the uh, light olive. So here, so I will put quite a few layers down at the bottom and then fade it up like that. And I will do that for all of the leaves, just so they all look the same. You don't have to do them all the same way. You can start some with the heavier layer at the tip and fade it towards the base. But in my head, this way makes more sense. And I like the consistency of doing it the same for all of them. But as I say, you don't have to do that. Now we have a few um, circles now. These little circles could be done as bubbles. Do your blue background for water, whatever you might choose to do. I haven't even thought about background yet. You might leave these white and do them as if they're little bubbles. I find it much easier to colour them as if they are stones. Now you could use grey, you could use brown. I think I'm going to use grey. I don't really want to introduce another brown, probably. I'm wondering if this grey is going to show up. Let's try it. And then you can decide. This is the number 80 again. This is the light grey. So what I try to do is do a darker outline and less towards the middle. Goodness, my children are talking really loudly next door. <laughs> I can almost hear every word they're saying. I've got my door shut. I almost checked. I had to check then because it's so loud. I was thinking, is my door shut? <laughs> it is they're getting excited about their game which is nice they're having a bit of a rest this weekend they uh, they've been working hard a bit burnt out so that's nice so yeah I'm trying to fade it towards the center but with such a pale color it doesn't necessarily show up that much you could use your black on the edge to make it darker or you could just leave it like that I'm the think I'm going to leave it like that because the problem with using black is there's always a risk it's going to go a little bit too harsh a bit too dark and um, you know it doesn't quite look right so now I have shown you all the elements um, how far through are we what I think I'll do is go away finish the page and come back and talk to you about the background I haven't decided if I'm doing one yet or not and I'll tell you what my decision is once I have finished now often before we go I will think about my background first because say I decided I wanted this to have a yellow background it'd be a bit weird wouldn't it but anyway um, I wouldn't choose to do that yellow there or else if I did the background the same color it would look like that was part of the background and it would look a little bit odd so it's wise to have a think. Now for this background, if I do one, it'll be blue, all bluey green. So I think it'll work with whatever I've chosen. I've not got any blues apart from this one, which I think looks quite purpley. So I'm not worried about that. So have a think, little think, but you know, I'm going to carry on. As I say, I'll come back and talk to you about background after I might, if I do one, it'll probably be a bit of soft pastel to be honest, because I can't face colouring all this in pencil honestly so I'm going to go finish this off and uh, and come back to you but um, for now enjoy um, I guess you probably will carry on watching so uh, I'll talk to you in about two seconds time hi everyone I have come back now after completing all the pencil part on this page um, you can have a look and uh, see what you think um, I think it's quite obvious what pencils I've used for which bits really you know, this one is the very darkest sea green and uh, these this is the sort of green and there's the light olive I think you can see um, what I've used um, but now it's time to do the background now you might finish here and think I'm happy I don't want to do background that's absolutely fine you don't have to you can have a look and see what I do and then decide 
um, or not. The difficulty with the background is there are lots of little tiny areas to get into. So I picked, um, got my pastels here. These are the um, Mungio soft pastels. I think they, there's a second, a different um, packaging for these as well, which is the same brand and everything the same. It just looks a bit different on the outside. But the idea is for me to pick um, what sort of watercolour I'd like. Um, you know, um, colour for the water. Now we've got blues and greens, which is what I will go for. Um, I'm thinking this colour here, which looks a bit like a light thallo green, is probably what I like the look of. I'm having a look here and I'm thinking, when I put this down, I'm going to go over the lines. I'm not going to intentionally do so, but I'm sure I will. So I want something quite pale, so when I go over the lines, it doesn't show up too much. And also, if I use one that's, there's a lot of green, so if I use one that's green, it's less likely to show up. Does that make sense? I hope so. You may prefer to do blue water, but I'm never sure which is the best. So I'm just going to take my, this is a um, cotton um, makeup pad, and I'm just going to rub it onto this green. Now this can be a little bit tricky, you have to make sure you don't rub any other. See the one next to it is really dark, I don't want to get any of that on my cloth or else I'll end up putting a completely wrong colour on my page. So do be careful and I don't want a large thick application, I just want it to be quite pale. Again this will help me when I go over the lines, it won't show up so much. Now when you're holding your page down, like I am here, try and hold it on a bit that you're not going to be putting pastel onto because, see here, I've just got to dot it into those gaps. It's going to get onto the grey. Um, your fingerprints will show up in the pastel, um, especially if your fingers are greasy. Mine usually are. I don't know why. but uh, So try and hold it down on a bit where there's... Um, pencil and where you're not going to be doing pastel. Also um, um, be careful with your sleeves and things like that because this will transfer. You can use a fixative afterwards to stop it transferring across. I'm not going to bother because I've just got the diary page on the other side and uh, I'm not going to use that page so I don't mind if the colour transfers across. Once I've taken my photo I probably won't look at this page until I do my flip through and then not enough is going to transfer off to completely wreck the picture anyway. It's n Although it can transfer it's not that bad um, as to sort of completely ruin it and this is just a light layer anyway. But you, as I say you can use fixatives, I've got two right here in front of me. I did do a little video about fixatives actually which might be more useful than me vaguely saying a few things here but you know it it can be useful to stop the transfer of pastel also what I'm doing is I'm working from top down as well so I don't smudge it with my hands my sleeve or whatever as I go that's something I would recommend and start at the bottom and then sort of wipe it upwards if you do do your pastel first then um Hmm. Um, do you, you can use your workable fixative on top of it so that it doesn't go smudging everywhere or just lean on a piece of paper I find that quite cumbersome I'd look I've missed a whole petal there never mind <laughs> um, yeah it can be a little bit cumbersome working with a piece of paper under your hand a lot of people do that anyway especially if they're using a smudgy pencil like a Prismacolor something like that I just can't be doing with it, I'm afraid. It gets on my wick. I do it occasionally if I've got already, if I'm using gel pen or something, or if I've used pastel, but not, not all the time. There we go, we're nearly there. Now, it doesn't have to be particularly smooth, although I just noticed I'd missed a bit there, because, well, it's water. It's a, it's not perfect you know it's just uh, just an impression of water it saves us having this big area here white which I think is better and there we go 
just going to, oh, I can see a bit up there, very carefully not to get it on my cardigan sleeve. There we go. So let's just move that away, actually. It's, it wants to flap, doesn't it? Put that on there to stop it flapping. That's what I tend to do when I take a picture. Whoops, or as it looks a bit weird. It, it doesn't look square. Just put it on there so it's a little tip for you. That's why people, whoops, when they take pictures, they decorate their pictures with paperweights and rocks and things like that. I am sure it's so that the page is square for them. Um, I'm sure that's the reason. Now, I'm always confused by my camera. Trying to take a photo is really, really hard. And I look on my screen and the bottom of my book looks almost completely level with the bottom of my camera, which is about here. But the top doesn't and so if I turn that so the top is square the bottom is really unsquare and what is going on I'm going to push it more into the center and hope that works but I I don't know my photography I need to do a photography course or something that would be good does anyone know anyone who does one any tips for taking photos of colored pictures really hard really hard and then I crop it. I mean, maybe I should just put it wonky and then, you know, it looks like I've intentionally done that. <laughs> and then maybe it wouldn't be so offensive. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. But anyway, I'm going to stop wittering on now. But that is that one. Um, yeah, there's a lot of detail. And I can already see here where I've got green pastel on my pink flower. I'm not going to get too worried about it and there and there because we were fading it towards the edge and the edge is where the pastel went you know it's going to happen and you can just brush your pastel off with a brush like this if you've got loose debris that's what I'm just doing there um, and uh, it's a really lovely brush someone sent me that it's really really useful and it's just a blusher brush I think I don't really do makeup it's beautifully soft lovely and it's also good for dusting your desk with but do um dust it off occasionally i dust it off on the edge of my desk to get the dust out of it or else um you're just brushing dust onto your picture which isn't ideal anyway thank you very much for watching hope you have a really lovely monday and happy coloring <laughs>